What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we are gonna build bomber seats from scratch out of aluminum. We're gonna do aircraft riveting. We're gonna do all kinds of cutting, dimple dies, bead rolling, forming, that kind of thing, flanges. Um, we're gonna make some cool seats today. That is the goal. So I've got a design that I really, really like and I'm gonna cut it out with the fast cut and uh, we're gonna start building some cool seats. And, uh, and I think what I'm gonna do as well is give you guys these drawings. If you like these seats and you wanna make your own, I'll put the drawings in the website so that you guys can download these files. Um, you can turn them to DXFs, you can get, get them cut by somebody if you want, or you can have them printed as a drawing template by you know, some kind of printing shop and, uh, and you'll be able to trace them out and make your own seats. If you like, just thought, maybe if you like them, we'll just sharing is caring. So anyway, thanks a lot everybody. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into it. All right, so let's show you guys what I got going on here. This is my idea for the seats. So um, this is actually what the seat is gonna look like. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, still a glare, isn't there? There sure is. There, there we go. So this is the seat that I'm thinking of. This is actually two layers. So as I look to the right, these are the layers separated. So we've got this as our bottom layer. We're gonna dimple dye these three holes. It's half inch, three quarter, one inch hole. And uh, we'll dimple dye those. We've got the seat belt slot. We've got all these holes pre put in here for the rivets. Um, what I've learned is that sheet cam in this software that I have now with the new machine will allow me to just pierce the center of all these holes, which I think is kind of neat because uh, now all the spacing is done, you know? Um, anyway, this other side, this is like to strengthen up the edges. So it'll be double thick sheet metal aluminum on the edges. Um, and it's also kind of strengthened in the uh, back sort of braced area riveted around the seat belt. We've got this kind of like angled back section here at the bottom. These are kind of roughly taken off the seats I built for my hot rod, but um, here's the rest of it. So basically this will be the bottom. There's nothing special there. There's gonna be a pad. And then that angled area I was showing you guys is gonna be two inch holes dimple dyed. Um, and then we've got this cutout here. Now what I'm planning on doing, and this is what I did with my other seats, is that this area oops is um what we would do some uh some cool bead rolling in right and then you just rivet that piece in so this piece which is the bottom the you know the back corner and then the back of the seat this i'm thinking about making out of a little bit thicker material and then um and then inserting a little bit thinner bead rolled piece for the back that's kind of the idea now, this is the insert for the back. You I mean, you have unlimited possibilities, but I drew it in here because with this new machine, we have this beautiful tool. Um, this is a, uh, they call it the Easy Scriber. Isn't that neat? Easy Scriber, it's spring loaded, has like this little diamond tip in it. So we can actually run this program to actually just scribe all the lines for the bead rolling which, I mean, it's gonna save so much time. So these are things I'm excited to play with um, and why I'm kind of doing this right now. Um, so that's like the side profile. That's that second piece. So these are our pieces that I'm gonna cut right now is this, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. That will make, well, I guess we have to do two of these and two of these. So that'll be what, six pieces? One, two, three, four, five, Six, yeah, six pieces per seat. So uh, that's the idea anyway, that's the plan. Hopefully we can make this happen. Mm.
All right, so my first jam up. Something happened here where um, this is kind of part of the learning curve. I'm creating layers in sheet cam. This is actually not sheet cam. This one is sheet cam. So I'm creating these different layers here and, um, and I think there was a problem with my drawing as well. But basically what happened is we had a bit of a crash. Um, this torch height was adjusting for torch height, but the, uh, well, that's exactly what happened. This popped up, this thought that this was down, and, uh, and then it came and it touched, and then caught on a bit of this rough, um, like the slag from piercing these holes. You know, I, I like the idea of piercing all these holes, um, and it did work like, you know, nine out of 10 of them, or probably more than nine out of 10 were fine. You know, they're a nice little hole pierced everywhere, but maybe this is putting too much heat into this and maybe I should just drill the holes. I'm not actually sure. It would be really nice if they worked as piercing, but, um, but you know what I think I might do instead? I just thought of this, is I should use the easy scribe for the holes and that way I have a perfect place to drill and it's all marked out. Um, and then I don't put so much heat into this. Otherwise, I mean, everything was beautiful. Like the cuts are beautiful, but because all those little tiny hot spots got pierced, I think that it's not worth the warping that happens. So um, I think that's my learning experience from this. I'm going to rewrite the sheet cam layers so that I can easy scribe the holes. Um, I'll, I'll still cut the, the slot and these little holes and the outside, but all these little rivet holes, I'll just use the uh, Easy Scribe and just mark them. This is the learning experience, I tell you, uh, you know, it's just, these, this, is, this is driver error here. I don't know what I'm doing, but this torch height at the same spot, it's happened to me three times in a row. It's my drawing, I'm sure of it, because I did the drawing in CAD, not Fusion. It's a little bit uh, older stuff. So for whatever reason, this torch starts driving itself down only like right when it starts this cut and it double cuts this one line so I know that that's my fault in the drawing so I'm not sure if that's what it is or or if the if the torch height goes crazy because this aluminum is like warping like like a lot I'm not sure but um, luckily Elio is gonna be here tomorrow in like hours so uh, I think I'm st instead of wasting more aluminum <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing my research tonight but I'm gonna ask him, um, I'm sure that he's run into this problem before, so um, I'm just gonna ask him when he gets here tomorrow what's going on, and uh, hopefully we get these things cut and we still get it built. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's cutting nice. It's just, 
it's just doing that one thing because of however I've done my operations, so. Mm -hmm. Just talked to Elio. It's this, uh, see this extra little clip on here? It's called an Omex sensor. It's just a more accurate torch height control from my understanding. So um, when you say maybe do a ton of pierces, like I did like over a hundred <laughs> um, all at once, sometimes a little bit of junk gets in between like the tip and the uh, outside and basically it just arcs out and gives the Omex sensor uh, incorrect reading. So although it is a super sweet thing, it's one thing that you gotta watch out for. If it gives it the wrong reading, then the torch height goes crazy. So um, the only difference not having it on is that um, it's just got a little bit of extra clearance. So I think Elio's suggestion is just like, don't use the Omec control for this operation because there's so much of this going on, I guess, or whatever. Anyway, so I'm gonna try it without this little red wire hooked up to the ground on this, and that will just give us um, a better cut, I guess. I'm gonna try it again. I guess that wasn't it. <laughs> uh, learning curves. Well, Ellie will be here in a little bit. I'll figure this out. Or I'll just call FastCut because they actually answer their phone all the time. So, Charlie, you might be getting a phone call. Ellie is here today. Ellie is back. He's going to help me troubleshoot this stuff because he's got the same machine. So uh, one thing we noticed is it was a little bit loose here. We had a bit of play, and that's kind of why we had this little bit of... And that's why we're thinking we had a little bit of uh, a wiggle happening. But um, that isn't really why it was driving down. The problem with it driving down, we think, is my drawing, like I said earlier, that double line. So I changed the double line. Now I'm going to put it back into sheet cam. We're going to look at it and, uh, and give this another go. So um, hopefully... We got her fixed. Okay, I think we fixed our wagon, so to speak. So, here's the deal. What I was doing wrong, Elio helped figure this out, is that um, I was using fine cut consumables on something that is not suggested to be used for fine cut consumables. So, there actually wasn't a, um, like a cutting chart on the program to use 45 amp fine cut consumables on aluminum sheet and there's a good reason for that. We found out, Elio actually found out through forums and whatnot that uh, the reason for that is that they do not suggest using fine cut consumables on here because it's got sensitivity there where the uh, aluminum shavings get up in there and kind of mess up, mess it up because of the consumables. So we went and got 45 amp fine cut or not, sorry, 45 amp consumables, not fine cut. Um, and these ones are supposed to work and there are cut chart, you know, stuff on sheet cam for it. Um, while we were out, we're also, cause we're doing these bomber seats. I only have these like really heavy duty. Actually, I'll show you guys. Let's, let's take a walk. Let's go check this out. Okay, so the bomber seat that we're trying to make is similar to, inspired by, close to could be my truck seat. So. This is the bead rolling and like, this is the, these are the rivets and stuff that I've got in here. These rivets are actually like really tough. These are, these are brass, like solid brass rivets. And uh, they're 3 16 which just, they're just a bear to put in. So we were trying to find an alternative to that. And, um, and the seat that we're making is, is, is inspired by this one, but not the same. It's gonna hopefully look even cooler. Um, so we wanted to find some rivets and didn't want to use these crazy, brass rivets which I have yeah here they are they're like they're pretty sick but if these were 1 8 shank they would be much easier to install um, they're just much harder than the aluminum ones they look super cool but they're just they're just so hard um, so while we were out we're like hey man we gotta try and find some aluminum solid rivets we went to I don't know how many different places called so many different places trying to find aluminum solid rivets apparently Really only used in aircraft industry. I remember using them building truck boxes with like aluminum extrusions and stuff. But um, we ended up going to this place 
we were like, we need to get, you know, some rivets. And uh, so been there, done that, got the t-shirt, literally. <laughs> the guy gave us t-shirts, check this out, they're sick shirts. We totally just like ran into this place, turbo lift, and uh, they had, like, it's like a helicopter maintenance facility that we were, we were just driving around airport hangar areas and just like, hey, let's go ask those guys. Let's, let's go ask those guys and uh, Minty. Turbo Lift had this, um, these rivets. And these are actually like a brass color, but they are aluminum. And we got them in eighth inch shank and 316s to try. So I'm really stoked to try that. So if you uh, are trying to do this aircraft supply places, uh, that's that's where you're gonna get the rivets. So it looks like Ellie is almost about ready to cut, and we are gonna give this another shot. thing is wicked look at these perfectly round little 1 8 circles so that I can drill all the holes perfectly spaced what a time saver Now we're changing to the 45 amp consumable and we're gonna cut the holes next. There's gonna be all the dimple die holes, seat belt slot hole, and then we'll do the perimeter cut.
That plus dimples, man? Oh, dude. Like coffee table legs like that? Are we making coffee tables? All right, so the next thing we're trying to do right now is we are trying to do the bead rolled insert that goes in the back of this seat. We're gonna scribe our diamond pattern and bead roll flange pattern that will be sitting in the back of this seat. And then we're gonna scribe all these holes. Then it's supposed to pause for a second while we take the easy scriber off, change to our 45 amp um, sink consumable and then it should just go right back to finish all of its cuts so if this works it's a game changer for laying out anything because like to lay out all your bead rolls it makes life way easier is, being able to just it's better than a sharpie it's crazy I mean, would you just look at it? Would you just look at it? That easy scriber is so crazy. Uh, we didn't have to scribe all of them because this actually is just a, a, a layout and, and going to have one on top of the other. So probably didn't have to scribe these ones, but we did anyway. But I mean, those are one eighth holes. Like look at how solid that machine is. It's doing that at 250, uh, what is it? 250 feet per minute? Inch per minute. Inch per minute. 250 inch per minute. My old machine, I cut everything on 60 or 70, but it can be accurate enough to do a perfect circle in a 1 8th diameter at 250 inches per minute. That's kind of nuts. This stuff looks like laser cut. I can't believe it. Like, yeah, I know, right? It's nutty. Whew. Okay, so now what's next? is uh, I can bead roll this at any time, doesn't matter. Got to clean up the edges. The back sides of this does have a tiny bit of uh, dross or whatever. So I think that I could probably take that off with just a deburring tool. Um, these are really handy if you don't have one. Uh, go check out kbctools.com. Use make it custom promo code if you register there. They have all kinds of tools, but uh, I buy these from them as well, just so that uh, you know, you guys know where to get them. These should be able to take all that off. I'm gonna try right now. Okay, so this is the back side of those cuts. I'm just gonna use this, uh, this little deburring tool.
Okay, so Elio's just uh, using the same little tool I was talking about. It has different tips. Check that out for countersinks. It cleans up drilled holes. Go ahead, do one. Okay. Fancy, handy. So he's cleaning those up. I punched as many as I could, but some areas couldn't. I couldn't punch that spot, and uh, Elio was drilling. So um, basically, what we're going to do is punch these holes. We have to, or punch, I should say, flare these holes with the press and our flare dies. And then we are gonna do the same to these three holes. Eventually, this back piece is done. It doesn't need, doesn't need anything from us other than to flare these holes. Then this piece goes on top. Uh, which side's which, this side? Just like that. Now we've got the holes already in this one. We'll be able to Clico, like drill a hole Put a Clico in there. I'll show you what Clicos are if you don't know what they are. Um, and then we're going to start assembling and actually drilling through them both and then putting in a rivet and drilling through them both and putting in a rivet, assembling them together. So this one will actually be three deep because the bottom will also flange up on the inside and be connected to all these. So uh, yeah, anyway, that's what we're going to do. Flare the holes bead roll the diamond insert that diamond insert will get oh, oh no i don't want to scratch it. i just scratched it a little bit um this diamond insert will go in from the back side like this we're going to flange around the edge here and then um, use the diamonds with the uh, uh, rubber wheel on the bottom and then just the sharp one on the top to kind of puff the diamonds up like upholstery and we'll just kind of tip this perimeter up so that it kind of pops out a little bit, puffs out a little bit here. That's what we're doing next. Are you excited, Elio? Yep. Gonna get these done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you could definitely use a press. I want to show you that you can just use a hammer. I, I kind of always use a hammer. It's also very kind of easy, quick. So these are some uh, dimple dies that I got from uh, KMS Tools actually, um, kmstools.com. They, they're Canadian, but some people on the channel have told me that it's it's, uh, it's actually like pretty inexpensive um, even to ship to the States. So anyway, here is the dimple die. I'm holding it the right way, right? Yeah. Few good smacks. Might have actually smacked it even a little hard because there's a little bit of an impression there, but there it is. Nice little dimple. Okay, so we are at the point now where we're gonna we're gonna start to assemble the seat. So we've drilled the outside that overlaps this here, so we'll be able to drill through. Now we're gonna go to the finger break, we're gonna break this edge the whole way, this edge the whole way, and then we'll adjust the fingers on the finger break so that we can break this and this into this profile. Then we should be able to Drill a couple holes and start actually clecoing this together. Um, let's, oh yeah, Ellie was, it's already on it. You knows what I'm thinking. I was like looking around for half a second for the clecos and away he goes.
So if you don't know what Clecos are, they're extremely handy. Um, very well used in aircraft industry for riveting, especially that's kind of what they're for. Small holes, like a one eighth hole. This is a one eighth Cleco. So what it has on there is, uh, it's got this little flat bar and then these two spreaders. So when you use Cleco pliers and depress it, they get skinnier than one eighth of an inch. You can pop them into a hole. And then as you pull out, they grab the edge of the hole and will spring load clamping sheet metal together. Super, super handy if you're doing this stuff. So uh, Amazon even sells this. You can get it anywhere, Eastwood, Amazon, any aircraft supply, I'm sure, but Amazon's like so cheap. Most of uh, our working stores. Yeah, KMS, they also sell them. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the brakes, start assembling the seat. So that one and that one. Just hold this for the tank. Okay. <laughs> Stuck into the wood. Okay, set. So um, now that these are holding everything together. We should go one, two, three, four. We'll pre drill them and then we'll drill through this and Cleco okay. on each. Okay. Let's go through that. So that we can clean the backside of the burr because it'll burr on the in, in between them right you think i'm not sure i wonder if can we can we double punch like can we just go like this can we just punch through i wonder if i wonder if that's worth doing so we don't have to clean it
Well, I just broke a drill bit and slammed it right into this beautiful aluminum. Um, that sucks, but we're gonna keep going. <laughs> Elio wants to try something, and I agree. I think it's a sweet idea. We are going to kind of like brush these so that they are slightly different color than the band around it. Something cool to do, and you kind of can't really clean them later. Um, scotch bright? Scotch bright. You need scotch bright or you need And then actually we could probably do that to the to the dies too, after we bead roll them. Could do. Because yeah. it's like pushed in from the yeah. back, pushed in from the back. Oh yeah, that looks sweet. I think center and center. Yeah. So, starting to look like a seat, got the sides clicoed on, gotta say, this little tool, this is an old tool, I remember meeting up with an elderly woman at a, uh, at a grocery store to buy this off a of marketplace, but uh, you can get these, um, you know, online, all, all kinds of different places, obviously you can get uh, cheap ones or expensive ones, it's a hand punch, works super, super well, we, we did all these holes with it, as many as it could reach. But um, yeah, anyway, super stoked with the way it's turning out. I like the idea of uh, brushing that little inside. I think it looks really, really nice. And uh, everything's going according to plan now. So what's next is going to be bead rolling this little piece. So like I said before, we're gonna use this and uh, we'll just use the kind of sharp tipping wheel on the top, pushing down with a soft rubber wheel underneath that will give us that puffed 
upholstery kind of look for the diamonds. And then we're going to use a, a tipping wheel, um, like a step type wheel on the bottom and a wheel on the top that just are slightly offset so that it'll step it. And now this outside perimeter will step up at the point where it's an edge on this. So we'll put that piece from the back side and then do the same thing. We'll we'll put it in there. I'm not going to do anything on the bottom. Maybe we'll throw some bead rolls in this way just for strength. But for the most part, um, the cushion for this will be like a thick piece of plywood that can have, uh, you know, kind of anchor bolts stiffing it all up. And um, yeah, anyway, that's where we're at. Happy with how it's looking. It's been a pretty fun day so far working with Elio and, uh, and the machine. So learning all kinds of stuff. Let's get this piece bead rolled and put in there. You guys ever seen a thread file? Maybe you have, maybe you have not. I had this piece from a garage sale for years before I knew what it was. I've no, known what it is for years now, but this is a thread file. Basically it has all the different pitches of thread. These are, uh, you know, uh, TPI, like threads per inch. You know, 11, 12, 13, 14, 20, 24. These are all common sizes for most things. So uh, what we just had happen here and why you saw us struggling is that a little gall happened on the thread on here. I think that, you know, in industry, um, a thread that has a lot of repeated vertical pressure on it, like this should possibly be an Acme thread. And what an Acme thread is, is like a squared off thread. You've all seen them before on like turnbuckles and stuff like that. But this has worked fine for years. So what happened is I guess a little spark or something attached itself to the thread, went in there, kind of galled it. We almost seized it. So we kind of had to lube it up and, and pull it out. But, um, this thread file saves the day when things like that happen because when a gall happens you just find the pitch of thread which uh i just had it what is this you just go and you line it up till it till it meshes perfect so we know that this is 20. so that's like a half 20 right half inch diameter bolt 20 is the uh, thread pitch so you just kind of go across it and then clean up your threads you just kind of run it through and it's, it's got the perfect pitch, so you just run it through. And then, hopefully, you don't have a problem going in and out anymore. Maybe it's a little bit tight, but it's, there it is. There's another thing that you can do if you have really tight threads. This is something I learned at the motorcycle shop, is that you can use a little bit of valve grinding compound, like as if it were anti-seize. It's like a little bit gritty. And uh, valve grinding compound is just like, it looks like anti-seize, but it's got a bit of grit in it. So what guys do when they're lapping valves is you drop the valve in, you put valve grinding compound on the two surfaces, and then you take the little suction cup. You ever seen like a little wooden handle with a suction cup on the end? Hold on to the end of the valve, stick it into the head, and then you do this, and the valve grinding compound actually goes in between the two surfaces and meshes and, uh, and seats the valves, grinds the valves. Little junk that I don't know why I know. So um, anyway, I'll probably put a little bit of valve grinding compound on this so that it works itself to have a little bit more play. Did I have some? Yep. So here, this is a uh, valve grinding compound. It's like, it's kind of greasy almost, you know? So I'm gonna back this thread out. It's already so much better. I'll just throw a little bit on there. And uh, yeah, that should, 
take the rest of any burrs off and you know later on you could maybe take that valve grinding compound out of there so that it's not continuously giving it more trouble but do you hear it you hear that that is working our burr out of there we'll just oh look at that oh that's so nice And we are good. I'm calling that good. Back to regular programming. Okay, so you see what happened here? How it's, we've got this big shape going on, diagonal um, lines with rubber on the bottom and this on top, of course it's gonna do that, right? You gotta think, where's the metal gonna go? You're pressing down and the rubber's pushing up. So it's basically adding a break into it. It's not gonna get that puff unless we work it a little bit. So I can't even put this back into the machine, you know, cause it's gonna hit. So what you gotta do after this first set of passes is you got to run it on the on the leg press, you know, and you got to kind of reverse it. So it's kind of a little bit hard sometimes. There we go. So you got to kind of massage it a little bit on the back side until you get it flat. See the flatter, flatter I can get it. Now that it's kind of looking flat, it's got that that puff into it right so just kind of work it a little bit a lot of sheet metal stuff is just forcing it around right okay next we're gonna do the exact same thing diagonally the other way All right, so there's our kind of puff pattern with the diamonds. This is 050 aluminum if I didn't uh, specify before. That's what it is. So you gotta kind of work it with your hands a little bit. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna step around the outside and that's, like I said before, gonna be the perimeter. It's gonna look really cool. So we're just changing the dies right now. Elio just popped off that uh, rubber bottom and this was the top, a little sharpened top. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use this one and this one to just kind of um, offset and give a little bit of a step. So Okay, whenever I do this, I always notice where the, where the handle is when it just touches the sheet metal, right? So if I have to repeat anything, I know how many turns it is. So I count my turns as soon as it touches the sheet metal, which is about here. So I'm gonna go 
That's one full turn. I'm just seeing it start to affect it. I'll probably do two full turns. We'll start there. We can always do it again, but it is nice to do it in one. I think this should be nice though. Coming to the edge here, I'm gonna turn down my speed a bit so I can do this radius. I'm just gonna keep the speed this slow. Even that radius is a little bit tough like that, actually. I like to try and be one smooth movement. There we go, nailed that one. kind of running over where I started. Not perfect, but not the worst. Got a little crazy in one spot there, but. Nice. All right, there it is. There's our stepped, tufted diamond pattern in our 050 aluminum. Um, like we did the insert on the sides, like Elio suggested with the scotch Bright, we're gonna do the same thing here, which is perfect because I did kind of scratch it in a couple spots. Uh, next time I'll run a little bit of tape on the bottom of this part of my bead roller. The edges are a little bit sharp. I usually do, but I just forgot. So we're gonna scotch Bright this a little bit and then get it clico in there. All right, there we got it. I love the way the seat turned out. We've got everything kind of clicoed in here. This is where I'm gonna leave this video because we are running on a little bit. We're gonna call this part one. The whole riveting exercise will be part two. And, uh, and I think I'm gonna add a few little beads in the bottom as well. And uh, we're just gonna kind of go over the project, see what we can maybe improve in the future, if anything. And um, yeah, so here it is. Very, very happy with the way it turned out. Had a lot of fun building these seats. I say seats, we only built one. This is the prototype, so I'm gonna build more of these. I'm really happy with the design. Like, I think it's, well, you guys need to tell me too. I need some feedback on this design because it's a little plain, but at the same time, I feel like it's not because we've got, you know, the extra double layer and we've got some cool, you know, dimple dyes in it. I feel like you could change it up too, you know, like the, the um, insert could be anything. You could also put an insert on the bottom. I'm probably gonna throw a couple bead rolls in there just to stiffen it up. I am considering maybe in the future having this center piece and back made out of a slightly thicker material. I think it would help with the seat because it's a little bit flimsy. You know, we've got double thickness on the sides here, which is nice, but this part and the back could be, say, 14 gauge instead of 50 thou, which is what this stuff is. But um, all in all, super, super stoked. Hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. All these parts can be cut out 
by hand. Like, you, you know, I, I use a CNC machine because I have it and it's amazing and, and it's a time saver. It allows me to make videos faster. But if you guys want to build this, like this seat at home, um, that's something that you can totally do. It's 16 inches square, has a four inch back section where we put the bead roll, or not the bead roll, but the dimple dies in the corner. Um, but other than that, it's just 16 inches, four inches, 16 inches. So it's something you guys could totally do. So if you like the design, I am gonna put eventually, it might not be up as soon as this video drops because I'm gonna be away and I'm gonna be editing it while I'm away, um, doing the class in Vegas. So eventually I will put these files in the description and on the website. Um, you can already get the files for the bead roller. If you guys didn't know, this bead roller that we use today, this is a homemade bead roller that uh, Elio and myself designed and built here, and we give the files away for free, so check that out if you wanna build your own super beefy bead roller. But um, anyway, I'm just gonna leave it here. Uh, had a blast. Thank you all for watching. Um, also wanna say, check out Bennett's Customs. He's got a lot of cool stuff going on right now. He's my homie in uh, Australia. I'm gonna go visit him during my Australia trip as well, so you guys will get to check that out. But Bennett's Customs, um, he's, he's got this single seat race car. He's building a, a Roadster right now, like a Ford Roadster, flathead power, all super old school, like traditional style, wicked hot rod stuff. And, uh, and he shows kind of all of it, his process and everything. And, and he does a lot of cool hammer forming and like old school techniques and definitely check him out. Also link in the description. Um, anyway, he just hit 10,000. So, so Jordan, congratulations on 10,000 subscribers as well. It's a really big milestone and uh and keep up the good work don't forget to like click subscribe hit notifications everybody if you want to be part of the custom crew there's a link in the description and there is a button at the end of the video um five bucks a month helps everybody out gets you 15 percent off the merch store and also gives you a badge by your name so that i know who's commenting and i make sure i get back to them um have a great week everybody we'll see you guys later